Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Numbers chapter three, but before we get started, I want to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Numbers chapter 3. This is the family line of Aaron and Moses, as it was recorded when the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai. The names of Aaron's sons were Nadab the eldest, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithmar. These sons of Aaron's were anointed and ordained to minister as priests. But Nadab and Abihu died in the Lord's presence in the wilderness of Sinai when they burned before the Lord the wrong kind of fire, different than he had commanded. Since they had no sons, this left only Eleazar and Ithmar to serve as priests with their father Aaron. Then the Lord said to Moses, Call forward the tribe of, tribe of Levi and present them to Aaron the priest to serve as his assistants. They will serve Aaron and the whole community performing their sacred duties in, the, in and around the tabernacle. They will also maintain all the furnishings of the sacred tent, serving in the tabernacle on behalf of all the Israelites. Assign the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They have been given from among all the people of Israel to serve as their assistants. Appoint Aaron and his sons to carry out the duties of the priesthood. But any unauthorized person who goes too near the sanctuary must be put to death. And the Lord said to Moses, Look, I have chosen the Levites from among the Israelites to serve as substitutes for all the firstborn sons of the people of Israel. The Levites belong to me, for all the firstborn males are mine. On the day I struck down all the firstborn sons of, of the Egyptians, I set apart for myself all the firstborn in Israel, both of people and of animals. They are mine. I am the Lord. The Lord spoke again to Moses in the tribe of Sinai. He said, Record the names of the members of the tribe of Levi by their family and clans. List every male who is one month old or older. So Moses listed them just as the Lord had commanded. Levi had three sons whose, name were, whose names were Gershon, Kohath, and Mary. Mary. The clans descended from Gershon were named after two of his descendants, Libni and Shimei. The clan's descendant from Kohath were named after four of his descendants, Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uzel. The clans descended from Mary were named after two of his descendants, Mahi and Mushi. These were the Levite clans listed according to their family groups. The descendants of Gershon were composed of the clans descended from Levi and Shimei. There were 7,500 males, one month old or older, among these Gershonite clans. They were assigned to the area to the west of the tabernacle for their camp. The leader of the Gershonite clans was Elsaph, son of Lay. These two clans were responsible to care for the tabernacle, including the sacred tent with its layers of coverings, the curtains at its entrance, the curtains of the courtyard and the surrounding tabernacle and altar, the curtain at the courtyard entrance, the ropes, and all the equipment related to their use. The descendants of Kohath were composed of the clans descended from Amram, Ithar, Hebron, and Uzel. There were 8,600 males, one month old or older, among the Kohite clans. They were responsible for the care of the sanctuary, and they were assigned the area south of the tabernacle for their camp. The leader of the Kohite clan was Elzaphan, son of Uzel. These four clans were responsible for the care of the ark, the table, the lampstand, the altars, the various articles used in the sanctuary, the inner curtain, and all the equipment related to their use. 
Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, was the chief administrator over all the Levites with special responsibility for the oversight of the sanctuary. The descendants of Mary were composed of the clans descended from Mali, Mah, Mahal, Mahali and Mushi. There were 6,200 males, one month old or older, among the Mariite clans. They were assigned to the area north of the tabernacle for their camp. The leaders of the Marite clan were Zeriel, son of Abahel. These two clans were responsible for the care of the frames supporting the tabernacle, the crossbars, the pillars, the bases, and all the equipment related to their use. They were also responsible for the post of the courtyard and all the bases, pegs, and ropes. The area in front of the tabernacle in the east towards the sunrise was reserved for the tents of Moses and Aaron and his sons, who had the final responsibility for the sanctuary on behalf of the people of Israel. Anyone other than a priest or a Levite who went too near the sanctuary was to be put to death. When Moses and Aaron counted the Levite clans at the Lord's command, the total number was 22,000. Males one month old or older. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now count all the firstborn sons in Israel who are one month old or older. Make a list of their names. The Levites must be reserved for me as a substitute for the firstborn sons of Israel. I am the Lord. And the Levites' livestock must be reserved for me as substitutes for the firstborn livestock of, of the whole nation of Israel. So Moses counted the firstborn sons of the people of Israel just as the Lord had commanded. The number of the firstborn sons who were one month old or older, was 22,273. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take the Levites as substitutes for the firstborn sons of the people of Israel, and take the livestock of the Levites as substitutes for the firstborn livestock of the people of Israel. The Levites belong to me, I am the Lord. There are 273 more firstborn sons of Israel than there, were, there are Levites. To redeem these extra firstborn sons, collect five pieces of silver for each of them, each piece weighing the same as the sanctuary shekel, which equals 20 garabs. Give the silver to Aaron and his sons as redemption price for the extra firstborn sons. So Moses collected the silver for redeeming the firstborn sons of Israel, who exceeded the number of Levites. He collected 1,365 pieces of silver on behalf of the firstborn sons of Israel, each piece weighing the same as the sanctuary shekel. And Moses gave the silver for redemption to Aaron and his sons, just as the Lord had commanded. Amen. So what did you think of Numbers chapter 3? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments too so we can pray together as a community. Okay, so Numbers chapter 3 starts off with the Levites appointed for service. Um, so it's reminding that um, God appointed the Levites to be in charge of um, you know, the, to serve as his priests in his sanctuary, in his sanctuary, in, in the tabernacle. And he put them in charge of the tabernacle. And it also reminds us of what Aaron's sons did to um, be put to death, um, how they, you know, did not obey God's commands and burn the, the, the fire the incorrect way and they were put to death. And so again, that is serves as a reminder for us to follow God's commands and to realize how important it is that we follow God's commands. We can't just do things our own way and expect to please God. We have to do things the way God has commanded and instructed us to do them. Um, then we go into the registration of the Levites. So just like the rest of the Israelites were registered, they registered all the Levites and they split them up into groups based upon um, the sons. Um, so Levi had the tribe of Levi and their family and their clan. So they split them up and you had um, Gershon in the north, uh, I mean in the west, and then you have Kohath in the south, Mary in the north, and then Aaron and Moses um, and his sons were in the east. Um, and I also wrote everyone has a job to do um, because each um, clan had specific responsibilities within the tabernacle. Um, and so it's, these were the specific things that they were responsible for. So like for instance, um, Gershon was assigned to the area to the west and um, they were 
responsible for the sacred tent, its layers and coverings, the curtains um, that surrounded the tabernacle. And then Kohath was responsible for the lampstands, the tables, the various articles used in the sanctuary. Mary was in charge of supporting the tabernacle, the crossbars, the pillars, the base, all the equipment. So you kind of, th when I think about this, I'm reminded of just like the service in a regular church. You have the people who are in charge of parking. You have the people, if depending on um, what kind of church you have, you have people who are in charge of setting up all the chairs and, you know, putting out all the Bibles or if you know you go to a church that still puts Bibles you know on in each seat um, you have people who are in charge of like AV and like um, you know setting up all of those things you have people in the you know guest services like welcoming so everybody has their own particular job so you wouldn't expect somebody who's in charge of the camera um, to be outside helping with the parking so when it's time to go everybody knows exactly what they're supposed to do where they're supposed to go and this is all done ahead of time and this just shows that God is um, God loves order and he doesn't want chaos because everybody know what the assignment is and what they're supposed to do and I know a lot of the times that seems like you know a lot of people you always see people um, asking like what's my assignment what's my purpose I don't know what I'm supposed to do Lord and just know that God wants you to know what your purpose is he wants you to know what your assignment is so when it is necessary for you to know it trust you will know it I think that the enemy wants to stress us out more than anything by wondering what our assignment is um, and just having that anxiety, not knowing, am I doing what God wants me to do? Am I doing my purpose? And as long as you are spending time with God and you are, you know, fulfilling his commands and you are obeying his word, he's going to speak to you. He's going to direct you. He's going to guide you. So you don't have to stress so much about what your assignment is and realize it will be handed to you. Um, you know, just like God puts people in charge of directing other people. He has order. You know, he always has this person goes first, this person goes next. So everything is lined up. So realize that somebody will come to you and say here this is what your assignment is this is what you know somebody will say hey will you would you like to serve on, you know in this place in the church or he'll put it on your heart that this is what you're supposed to do so we have to trust God in that and not stress ourselves out so much over what our assignment is and just realize that God wants us to know what our assignment is God doesn't like chaos he likes order and he's ordering your steps even if it may not seem like it even if it seems I wrote aside when life seems random and chaotic remember that God is order so reading through this just reminds us how much God is about the details and he's about order especially when when it comes to his temple and his people and it your body is your temple and you are his people so just realize that you may not realize whatever you're doing right now is a step in the process but God has an order to how he wants you to get where he's sending you so just you have to trust in him um, and then it also this chapter showed how God um, set apart all the firstborn sons of um, the Israelites as his own and he says he's chosen the Israel he's chosen the Levites from among the Israelites to serve as substitutes for the firstborn son so there were only 22,000 Levites so they still had to redeem um, 273 other um, firstborn sons of the Israelites so they ended up paying five shekels per um, extra son that they didn't have a Levite for. So that is my interpretation of Numbers chapter 3. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope you stay blessed. Stay in God's presence and have a great rest of your day. I love you.